practicing, I see as a self-teaching process. You, know, you are teaching yourself away from the, the, the time frame of your piano lessons, and you have to become your own teacher. You are uh, helping yourself learning. You are uh, hopefully you know, providing advice to yourself you know, and, uh, and finding ways to deal with the problems that are contained in the score and, and projecting them and reali realizing them musically. So that does not just mean being at the piano, although of course it, it, it is the most essential part. But excuse me. Generally, I find that uh, the most useful part of practicing for myself is um, when I am away from the piano, for example, taking a walk and just thinking about the work that I'm studying. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's startling sometimes to see what kinds, of, what kinds of revelations can come to you. The music rolls in your head uh, and uh, some things that were never apparent while you are playing finally become obvious and crystal clear. I can't really explain why that happens, although it should be said that uh, when you are free from any physical movement, the, the physical act of performance, and you are just thinking about the pure music, um, ideas are much likely to be clearer in coming to you. And, uh, certain things will reveal themselves that were completely hidden to you at the moment of uh, sitting down at the piano. And uh, it's, it's nice to have these ideas when you are just thinking about the music because then you go to the piano and see whether they actually work. Sometimes they don't, but uh, counterpoints, hidden counterpoints will finally become obvious, uh, become apparent. Uh, tempi will be adjusted. Mm -hmm. um, Climaxes will be more apparent, perhaps, and this is partly to answer your question before. The point of the piece, maybe, as Rachmaninoff said. So all of these things can be applied into practice when once one sits at the piano. And, uh, it's a, it, it's a really thrilling process. This uh, discovery, this exploration, uh, this exploration of possibility possibilities at the piano. You, uh, you really should start uh, with a, uh, an idea that anything is possible and that complete freedom is available to you. Mm -hmm. Of course, you, know, you have to apply certain stylistic strictures, but within that, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's much better to have, uh, to feel freedom. I, I feel that there's a lot of piano teaching that is that involves strictures and, you know, boxing you in, if you will. And uh, it hit me a couple of years ago, actually, that much of my early teaching, as good as it was in other ways, was mostly based on, no, you can't do this. No, no, this is not allowed. No, this is too fast. No, this is too slow. You know, don't do it like that. It was always don't, don't, not, not, you know, and uh, never, what about this? or maybe do it this way, or, you know, yeah, that's good, but it could be done better. It was always no, no, no. Um, I, and I have to say that because of this, it took a great deal of time for me to, to feel like I had any right to feel free. Mm -hmm. Although I don't think that this should be a license for students to, to do anything they, they please, <laughs> it, it should still made clear that, you know, making music and uh, or practicing any kind of art is not about imposing limits. I believe that very strongly. Mm -hmm. And I say this as a non-teacher. So draw your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a teacher, maybe I would think differently. Mm -hmm. But uh, speaking from my own experience as a student, this is what I have to offer. 